Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. How you guys doing today? It's so good to see each and every one of you. You guys look, wow, you guys look amazing. You guys look great. Uh, my name is Pastor John Mark, if you don't already know that. I have the express privilege of being the care pastor here at Family Church. I thank you guys for entrusting me, for allowing me to care for you as we move this church forward. And let me tell you a little bit about myself. I started working at this, this specific church at the age of 22. So I've been working here for 16 years. Years And I just made 16 years this month. And I first, before I get into anything else, I want to thank our very own lead pastor, Pastor Mike. Thank you for believing me. Thank you for sticking with me for over 20 years of shaping me and helping me become the person that's standing here on this stage. And I thank you. And we appreciate you because this is still Pastor Appreciation Month. Let's give it up for our pastor, Pastor Mike. And um, so as I'm talking about myself, I want to just continue to talk about that is I recently got married. Any married people in the house? In 2020, during a pandemic, the craziest time to ever get married, I got married to this wonderful and beautiful lady that you're going to see on the screen right about now. Our, our team is going to put that up. And I had uh, recently, in 2022, I had a baby boy. And I named him John Mark Daniel Ferguson Junior, of course you would. You would definitely name your son after yourself. Let me just move this out the way. And today, um, I brought some things with me. And, and ever since I was a kid, I loved comic books. Do I got any comic book heads in here? Please, someone shout at me. I love comic books. You love Marvel. You, know, you love DC. You like Captain America. You like the Fantastic Four, those sort of things. And I brought these uh, comic books here with me. And let me tell you something about these comic books. My brother and I, my brother Timothy, shout out to Big Tim. Hey, yo, Big Tim. Um, we used to take our lunch money that our parents would give us and save it up and go buy comic books. So we would be in school holding our stomachs. I'm so hungry. <laughs> and we would go and buy comic books. You can't really eat comic books, right? So I got a couple of my favorite issues here. I have an issue of the Silver Surfer with Thanos. Everybody knows who Thanos is. He had the Infinity Gauntlet and he snapped it and the whole, it removed half of the people on the planet. In this episode, of, in this issue, in issue number 55, uh, Thanos grabs the Infinity Gauntlet and he starts to recreate the entire universe in the image of death. Mm, that's a scary one. Oh, sorry, we're in church, right? And this is Marvel Tales, Fantastic Four. You have your Reed... Richards, you have your Susan Storm, you have your Ben Grimm, you have your Johnny Storm, which make up the Fantastic Four. Oh my gosh. And one of these episodes, Reed Richards finds his way into the negative zone and he's fighting this guy named Annihilus. You see those wonderful pictures? Oh my gosh, I love this, up, this one. And this is one of my favorite of all time. You've probably never seen this. This is called the Amalgam series. This is when they took DC and Marvel and smashed them together. So on the front cover, there is a guy called the Super Soldier that Superman and Captain America brought together. And I, I'm going to continue. And I have more issues that I brought with me today. I brought an issue with me of grief. And that issue hurts a lot. And I think we've all experienced grief in the past two years, probably like we've never, ever experienced it before. I brought the issue of grief. I brought an issue of low self-esteem. Maybe I don't think I'm that good. And maybe you've, you face these sort of issues. And I, I brought up my daddy issue. Maybe you have a daddy issue this morning. Maybe even you have a mommy issue. There might be things going on in your life. And just like me, we all have issues. And maybe you have this one issue, this issue with people. Nobody likes me. Everyone hates me. Look, look how that girl looked at me. Look how he looked at me. Nobody really wants to be my friend and maybe you have an issue in your marriage and it's an us issue. It might have been something that you've uh, worked through, maybe uh, infidelity, something. Or you guys just don't listen to each other or communicate clear enough. You might have an us issue. And for the fellas in here, you might have a, a men's issue. And I know a lot of men suffer in silence. 
We don't have best friends. We don't have people we can turn to that we can share our hurts, habits, or hang-ups with. And we just suck. We, we try to bear it. I got to be tough. But nobody, everybody knows what you're going through. Us men know and understand that sometimes you can't really cry in front of everybody, but you might sneak out to the shower, and as your shower's going, it's running down your face, you're crying, and I don't know how I'm going to make it. And you want to give up, and you want to quit, and that, that might be your men's issue. And, and as you get older, you might have issues with your parents. They may be getting older, you don't know how to take care of them, and, and you might need uh, some help, and you don't know how to get that help. Maybe you have an issue with one of your parents leaving you and running out on you, and they should have stuck around and been there to see you grow up, but they left you. You might have a struggle with parents. And, and, and the issues I have here today are actually only the issues that I can actually carry in my hands. But uh, the team actually went through my house and through my life, and they actually have more issues that they're about to bring here to this stage. That they, they, It's kind of heavy. Come on, you can bring those crates out. See, Pastor Chris went to my house, and he found some more of my issues kind of hiding underneath my bed. Does anybody have any issues hiding underneath their beds in their life? Oh, we all got issues. Can you do this for me? Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you got issues. Oh, I, I might. Oh, that, that's going to ruffle some feathers and, and hurt some folks. I already saw the face. You can't tell me I got no issues. Turn to the other side and tell them, you got issues. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe, maybe just turn around real quick and tell them, you got issues. And up here, I got all of these issues that I've been struggling with. Oh, there goes my wife. She found some of my other issues, and, and she, she brought it out, more of my issues. And, and today, I got a lot of issues. Am I the only one in this building that has issues? Oh, he raised his hand high. I love that, brother. Yes, that's the first step. We're going to begin to get healing today. We raise our hands and say, hey, listen to me, look at me. I got some issues, Pastor. You don't even have to get to the end of the sermon. I'm ready to come right up here. And, and these are some of my, my favorite issues, and I faced an issue of acceptance, and that turned into loneliness. And my first issue of acceptance I can remember happened when I was very, very young, and my brother Timothy, shout out to Big Tim, hey yo, Big Tim, <laughs> and his friend Richie, his friend Richie had a lot of toys, a lot of cool action figures, and they were really good friends, and they were... Uh, we were at Richie's house, and he was going into their room, and they were about to go play with some toys. And little John Markey came in and was like, I'm going too. So I started to march into the room. And as I began to get closer and closer to the door, all of a sudden, I felt this hand go on my forehead and push me out and say, guess what? You're not part of the club. <laughs> oh, that dug right there. That got right into my heart. And... I still struggle with that. I'm 38. I'm supposed to be a man. I got a kid. I got a wife. I got a house. But sometimes I feel it. When other people get invited to maybe a party somewhere, and I see the pictures on Instagram and Facebook, you know, you, you know. And they start scrolling, and they, they, thought they couldn't just post one picture. They had to post all 10 pictures. Everyone's, like, doing this pose, like. And it's the funniest thing, and, but you're home alone. Maybe they don't like me. Maybe they didn't want me. Maybe they didn't want me around, and you start to feel that way, and that issue is stacking up. Another issue of acceptance is, uh, if you didn't know this, shout out to mom and dad. Hey, hey, mom and dad. I was an unplanned pregnancy. They didn't really have it in the works to have a, a, a third child. They already had a boy and a girl, and the third child, unexpected. But my parents were very, very careful. They're believers, and they love Jesus very much, and they made sure to always make me feel special and unique. They said, God has a plan for you. You're, you're called. Don't, don't think that you're not worthy, but you're worthy. But no matter what story they told me, I believed my own issue. I believed my own story that I began to write based upon the information that I received from them, but I wrote my own type of story. And then I have, I really don't want to do this today, is unpack all my issues in front of you. This, this is hard, but I, I have this issue of grief. This issue of grief. I remember the first time I encountered grief 
I'm about four or five years old. And there was a young uh, man in our church, in our old church that we used to attend. He used to promise me every week, we're going to go fishing, Johnny. We're going to go fishing. And I promise you we're going to go fishing. We're going to go fishing. And I said, okay, is it this week? He said, no. I said, okay. He said, is it next week? No. Okay. And he promised and promised. And, and it was coming up to the week where we were about to go. And that man dies. He didn't just die in, in, uh, of old age. He fell down an elevator shaft. And he hit the bottom. And when he hit the bottom, he drank some of the water that was at the bottom of that. And it went inside of him. And it made him very, very sick. And he died. But the problem is, he was four or five years old. And you're telling a five-year-old the exact details on how somebody died. And that left a stain of grief. Then in 1998, my grandfather passed away. He's one of the inspirations I stand here on this stage today. James Alfred Ferguson. He was a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He left his home in Jamaica, went to England, and he became a missionary to America. He wanted to save people's lives. He had a program that he worked with. It was called Shepherd's Flock. It would help men that were fresh out of prison find hope, find Jesus, find deliverance. And that's uh, some of the reason why I'm here today. I can remember walking by his room and hearing him say these words, I lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And I remember as a kid, and look, I'm 38, and that was years ago, and I still remember those words. Side, side note, grandparents, begin to speak the scriptures in your home. You don't know who's listening. You don't know how those incorruptible seed of the word of God is planting in those children's lives. And my grandfather would, would say these words, and, and, and he died. He's supposed to be here forever. He's supposed to be here to see my... My family, the little baby, you're supposed to be here. But he died. And in that year, I was in eighth grade, and I didn't complete eighth grade. I had to go to summer school, and, and, and I didn't know why, but it was because of the grief. Then in 2006, my grandmother passed away. That's the lady that's on the front of this. Let me tell you a little bit something about my grandmother. My grandmother was a praying woman. She was also a West Indian Jamaican. We're many West Indians in the building. Jamaicans. Bo, bo. Who you call? In the building. Yes, man. Yes. She was a praying woman. And when my grandma would get to praying, it was like, bo, 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 bo. it was this fire of the Holy Ghost would come out. And you would feel God's presence. And the beauty about my grandmother is that she would take the time every day to pray for everyone. She says, bless Rutan, and bless Andrea, and bless James, and bless this one, bless that one. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that for your word and how your word is transforming. That she would pray and pray. And then um, towards the end of her life, I remember going to her room, sitting next to her. I'm about 19. And I go lay on her lap. And she says, Johnny, so she called me Johnny. People may not understand you, but God understands you. God understands you. And so for me, she was influential in the way I pray. The reason I pray the way I pray is because of grandmama. The reason I can lay hands on people and watch the sick recover because grandmama taught me. You tell, she used to be, you tell the devil where to go. My name is in the near my Jeep. Like, and the enemy would go and flee. And that issue of grief, I carry with myself. I can't be the only one in this place that has some of these issues. Issues of loneliness. Anybody? Anybody got an issue like of loneliness? Let's be honest. Let's, 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 let's get all the fake church dress and all that off right now. Come on. Uh, abandonment? Abandonment. Anybody? Hoarding. Wanting to hold on to stuff. That just comes from loneliness. Hoarding. Yeah, okay, you can be honest, and it's okay to be honest this morning. And, and you, it may seem kind of funny, but guess what? I had a real issue this week. I went to go help somebody move, and I asked, them, and, and they had a, 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 a guitar amp. I love collecting guitar amps, by the way. They had a guitar amp, and I said, hey, what are you doing with that? They said, you want it? It's, it's yours. But guess what? My wife told me... <laughs> John Mark Daniel Ferguson, when you know, when you, you know something when your wife uses the whole name, it's the whole name. John Mark Daniel Ferguson, senior, 
right? Because that's that junior, right? I got a little junior, right? Senior, do not bring another instrument into this home. We have too many already. And I said, oh, maybe I should. I, I want to. I want to collect that because my good friends are moving. They're leaving. And that's a piece of them I can have and I can hold. And because I have something from Uncle Tony, it will never leave me. Uncle Tony may be leaving, and it hurts because I love him. That, that's, that's my guy. But I have a piece of him. And that's, that's loneliness. That's abandonment issues. If I can hold on tighter and tighter to the people around me, they'll never leave. If I surround myself with things, those things will never leave me. And I got a special issue secret issue. Nobody saw me bring it on stage, but I got it. Blood out. <laughs> if you're a comic book head, you know what this is. You know what this is. This is Action Comics number one, 1938. Superman's introduction. Uh, actually, this is, the, uh, this is the first introduction. This wasn't the first Superman comic, but this was the first action. Yes, this is my issue that, that was my secret issue. No one's ever going to know. No one's ever going to see this. This is my issue. When, when I got married, I told my wife, you know, I got, a, I got a little tiny issue. It's not that big. It's just nobody wants you. I'll be funny so everyone won't leave. Not with that little issue that I have. But unbeknownst to her, the issue went pretty deep. And it was pretty big. And oftentimes, when we have these issues, we have a subscription to these issues. Every month, they show up. Every year, when that, the anniversary of that person's death, hello, knock, knock, knock. I have your brand new subscription of grief. Here you go. Knock, knock, knock. When you walk by that store and you've been sober for so many years and knock, knock, knock. Here's it, here it is, here it is again. Here's your subscription. Here's a description to your low self-esteem. I can't do this. Do you know how, how many offers of the subscription I got before I preached this message? Of, of you can't do it. God doesn't want to hear you. Nobody wants to hear you in this place. You know how many subscriptions I got that try to come to my door and say, excuse me, sorry, that's not my name anymore. It's, it's low self-esteem. That's not who I am anymore. Sorry, that doesn't, you got the wrong address. Sorry, you can have that back. So that's, that issue, and, and I see in the scriptures, God wants to help us this morning to, get, to begin to get healing and move forward with the issues that you have. In Proverbs 4, 23, it says, um, let's, give, let's backtrack. In Proverbs, Proverbs was written by King Solomon. King Solomon was considered the wisest man who ever lived. And he's writing the last of these things down for his son, like I have a son. He's writing these last things down, and he's saying, Listen to me very carefully. Please, please, I want to leave a legacy. And this morning, if you say, hey, I want all those generational issues to stop with me. I want to leave a legacy. I have news for you. It's not if you will leave, it's not if you will leave a legacy. It's what kind of legacy you're going to leave. Yes. What do you want your family to be known for? So he's trying to explain to his son, and he says to him, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. A faithful version says, above all, guard the door to your mind with diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. When, we, when I don't guard the door of my heart, what goes into my heart comes out as? It comes out as? Issues. You know what? Let's be honest. Not all issues are bad. <laughs> you know what a good issue to have is? A lot of money in the bank account. A little, ten, a little extra 10000 Anybody can use a little extra ten? Well, let me see if I have a little. No. <laughs> Anybody can use extra $10,000? Yeah, I could. But the problem is, how am I going to spend that? Oh, I know what to spend it on. Don't worry about it. If you feel like you want to give me $10,000, i am right here. <laughs> One of the great issues is letting our kids into our heart. For talking to our, our children and, and spending time. That's a good issue to have. A good relationship with your kids, that's a good issue. But not all issues are bad. 
So let me just explain this. Out of my heart, the things I believe come out of me, and then they turn into action, and then they begin to stack up and cause issues. The issue with low self-esteem, you'll never go for that job promotion that's sitting right at your, that you've been praying, God, if you just give me a chance, Lord, I will use it for your glory and for your honor. Hey, there's a new job opening. Oh, I can never do that because I have all my issues that I have right here. Yeah. And I believe today that God wants to move you to the next phase of your life, wants to move you to a greater phase of your life. I just want to tell you something this morning as I was thinking and as I was meditating. The person that got you here, because we all have a persona that we put on. We put our church persona. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Please. We can see through it. Sorry if you didn't know that. We carry persona. But I felt the Lord speak to me this week. He says, the persona that got you here won't get you to the next place that I have for you. So then we start to deal with the issues. We start to let those things go. And this is what Jesus said. I didn't say it. So if you can be offended with the Bible, you're going to be offended with Jesus, not me. So great. <laughs> so Luke 6, 45, it says this. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Anybody ever lose their temper? Anybody struggling with an anger issue? I'm not talking about punching through the walls. I'm not talking about fist fighting folk. You know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Don't talk to me. Hmm. Here's your little dinner. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> How old are we? Those are the, it, how old are we? Right? We do the silent treatment. Oh, I'm not mad. I'm fine. I'm okay. And we have that face that we put on. Let me tell you something. What you say can cause issues in every area of your life. Husbands, I know we like to be direct. Get that thing. Come on. Grab it. Yeah, but a lady, she needs some smoothness to it. I know I can be rough sometimes. I can say certain things or maybe be a little too critical, like, oh, yeah, fix that, blah, blah, and not think about who's standing in front of me because that's self-centeredness, right? When I don't think about the other person and say, how, how is what I'm about to say going to affect them? That's self-centeredness. It's about me, right? It's about pride. It's about me. And just like these comic books and these comic issues that we have, Issues are happening in my life. The way I see myself is like a magazine company that's been purchased by Jesus Christ. And he set me as the editor-in-chief over it. He says, whatever you want to put out in this magazine, that's you. But here's what this magazine stands for. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. That you, you, uh, I've given you power to create wealth. There's these things that God said about me, but I still want to edit my own life in a certain way. I'm the editor-in-chief of my mind, will, and emotions. It's my job to guard the door of my mind and my thoughts. So I was reading about uh, these two cognitive scientists. They said this, that all thoughts are built from analogy making. Analogy making is making comparisons. They propose that through categorization, through analogy making, is the driving force behind all thought. So just because someone did something, we take it and we make a meaning of it. Well, they looked at me that way. So that means they hate me. Did they say that they hate you? <laughs> no, you just assumed based upon the things you faced previously in your life because people used to give you that look in your own house. Now you think everybody that gives you that look hates you. Maybe they're looking at something on your shirt and they're trying to help you. They don't mean they're angry. They're just like, oh, my gosh, you got that thing on your shirt. I want to help him, but I don't know because I have low self-esteem and I can't tell her. <laughs> so you're both in these issues that you have. In other words, we gather information through different sources. We're going to call them reporters. Reporters. And which what we see, what we hear, and what we feel is how we gather this information. We write a story based upon the information we've gotten. But guess what? It's, we started adding meaning to that story. What we experience is painful, right? Loss of a loved one. Does that mean everybody's going to leave me? No. It means that specific person died, right? 
lost in a relationship. They broke up. The other person might not like you very much, and you guys might have this split. But I add the meaning that no one will ever love me again. Well, if someone loved you before, how about they're going to love you again? There's, that's a possibility. You know how many people are on the planet? <laughs> There's somebody out there for you. You know, so we begin to create these stories. And we filter the meaning through our hearts and instantly publish them. We say, you know what? That story's true. Here, send it to print. And we print it. <laughs> and now people read this. Well, no one will ever love them again. I don't know why nobody would ever love them again. Maybe they're a terrible person. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't love them again. Based upon what we read, based upon what people read about us, they create a boundary for us. They'll let us come this close or we'll go that close to them. You might be in this room. And you say, you know what, Pastor John, I didn't write any issues for, for myself, but someone else did. Some may have taken advantage of you. And you know what I'm talking about. Someone may have done something physically violent to you, maybe punched your head in, and, and they wrote an issue for you. But today, I believe that God wants to help us with our issues. Amen. God wants to deliver us from those issues that are holding us back from the life that he designed for you. It says that I've come that you may have life and more abundantly. Amen. And it's time to begin to work through our issues. And this reminds me of a, a, a story located in the book of Mark. Um, the book of Mark, let's give some background. The book of Mark was written by a guy named John Mark. <laughs> I didn't write the Bible. He did. And he wrote it based upon the teachings of Peter, the apostle. And in Mark 5, 25, there's a story about a woman with the issue of blood. And we can relate to this story in, in, in such a way. And let me read it to you. A certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things under many physicians had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard Jesus, came up behind him and then pressed in in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from the plague. And then Jesus, meaning knowing him in himself, that virtue had gone out of him. He turned about in the press of the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? And he looked round about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had been done in her, came and fell down before him. And told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. If you notice something about this, this story, and it's one of my favorite stories, that she spent all that she had. She went through all of these things, but she knew who to turn to. And today you may have come in here and say, I don't know how to get over this. And it's not by accident you're here sitting in this place. And maybe somebody dragged you to church and you're like, I don't, I don't want to go. God wants to help you through your issue this morning. The issue in your life costs her something. The ongoing issue in your life is costing you something. Oftentimes when I suggest counseling and say, hey, maybe you should go to a therapist. Maybe you should get some counseling. Maybe you should go to these things. It costs too much. Which price are you willing to pay? Are you willing to lose your whole family? Maybe lose that job because you won't deal with your issue? Losing those relationships you care most about because you won't deal with your issue? You got to get to a point in your life where you're sick and tired of having the same issue. Going over and stepping over. You've noticed me the whole time I'm stepping over these issues. And you're every day, it's sitting in the front lawn, it's sitting everywhere, it's sitting in, the, in your bedroom, it's sitting everywhere in your life. You have these issues that you have. So what can I do? Great, Pastor John, you point out all the problems that I have. Thanks, appreciate it. I'm going to make a fun drive home. Admit first, in order to get healing and begin their, your process, you have to admit that you have an issue. Admit it. Don't be so, I'm not, you have an issue of pride right there. <laughs> there you go, you have an issue, so now admit it. 
Admit you have an issue. Next is that she aligned herself with God's word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, right? So he aligned himself with the word of God. He says, if, but if I touch the head of his garment, but if I touch him, if all I need to do is get into the place where I touch him, she began to see herself whole because he says, if I touch him, I'm going to be whole. And this is what Romans 12, 2 says. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The way to transformation is through the word of God. being transformed up here in your mind. And that's what, what getting help is going to do for you. The third thing is to get help. The woman knew she had an issue. She had to admit that she needed help. She went to the place where she knew she could be healed. She couldn't do it alone. She needed to get help with the negative issues. And we have so many resources here at Family Church. Please don't just come week after week and never get help with your issues. We have something called Celebrate Recovery. Come on, you can make a little bit more noise for that. And people's lives are being changed and transformed every week, Thursdays at 7 p.m. If you need help with your hurts, habits, and hang-ups, that is the place to go. And we also have counseling, fam life counseling. But it costs too much. Is it easier to keep the issues in your life instead of getting rid of them? You tell me. I'll wait. <laughs> I have a lot of issues. How am I going to pay somebody to help me get rid of these issues? It's, it's so hard. It's easier to stay the way you are, right? It feels that way because we're comfortable with what we have. It got us here. That persona got us here. Oh, I'm comfortable with my pain. I'm comfortable with my grief. I'm comfortable with my sorrow. But God wants to set you free today. The price that you pay to get rid of your issue is in no comparison what it would cost you to keep it. I'm going to say that again. The price that you pay to get rid of your issue is in no comparison to what it would cost you to keep it. Remember what James 2.20 says, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Saying, God, I believe that you're, you already healed me, you already touched my life, but I'm going to go get some help. You know what faith is? Going to the doctor. How can you say that? It's believing that you'll see the manifestation of your healing. God, I'm going to align myself with the word of God. I'm going to do what I can do in the natural. I'm going to start eating right. Okay. Cut down on the salt and all that sugar. Yeah, okay. You can do that. We could all do it. And then I'm going to pray and speak the word over my life. And I'm going to go get some help. I've realized in my life that I can't keep carrying these issues anymore. If my hands are full of these issues, what can't I do? I can't love like I want to. I can't help my wife like I want to. I can't help anybody like I want to because I'm holding on to these issues. And I believe I can't keep carrying these issues and hand them off to my son so they become generational issues. And today we're going to break some of those generational issues that have been holding you down. You're going to be dropping those things today. Today you're going to start your process that the secret issues of your life, and we're going to allow God to rewrite my story. Look what Hebrews 12, 2 says. I get so excited. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Allow God to rewrite your story. The story that you may have told yourself when you came in is not the story that you're going to carry when you leave here today. I'm taking this 1938 magazine out, and I'm going to say this is my issue of my low self-esteem, my lack of confidence, and no longer those things are going to hold me back because God has something great for me. If I allowed the, the subscription to come to my house and prevent me from standing here today, I wouldn't be able to deliver the message that God placed inside of me. So no longer the life that God has for you, you got to let go of those issues. You got to get some help because there's people that need to hear your story. When you allow God to rewrite your story, he puts you in his story. You got to allow him to do that today. And then what we do is we take on his issues. He's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have the mind of Christ that you need that no man teach you except the Holy Spirit. We begin to take on that this same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. Now we can take on his issues. In your life today, your issues may be stacking up and they can be demolished. You're no longer defined by your issue, but you're defined by his image. This one's for the first part. This first part is for the people that didn't know they can get delivered today. That you may have come in here and you hear me talking about this Jesus character. Who's this Jesus? 
I don't know who that is. But you say, you know, I'm tired of holding my issues. And if Jesus can change my life, I want to receive him today. And we're a family today. And we, this is how we, we love to pray uh, today. Can we pray this prayer together? Just repeat this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ and watch him transform your issues, pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you in Jesus' name, just like I am, with all of my issues, with all of my struggles, and I give them to you. Jesus, I receive you today. I receive your free gift of salvation. Jesus, you are Lord. And come into my heart. Change me. Make me new. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.